hotel specifically has the top awards of any other hotel in the Americas, right, of any other brand, has the most. And, and, and that can be taken in a moment. I tell my colleagues, it's one thing to earn them, it's a terrible thing to ever lose them. I think the prevailing attitude amongst myself and, and my colleagues is the answer is yes. Now, what's the question? Thank you very much. We get all kinds of crazy requests. In New York, we spelled out, uh, will you marry me in bed sheets in Central Park? It took like 15 people to do. A guest had forgotten his dress shoes. Our concierge took his shoes off because they were the same size. I myself have pulled off a tie. You name it, we do it. As long as it's ethical and moral. I mean, one example, a guest wanted and proposed to his fiance. I got a, a professional harp player. We had the candles, the rose petals on the floor. Did she say yes? She didn't say anything, but I think it's, uh, that's okay too, though. Do exactly. Yeah. I'm a good concierge, I'm not that good. <laughs> I think what's interesting about our industry and hospitality is that you're totally exposed. You know, you can't hide it. You can't, I'm not selling a product and then walking away from you tomorrow. It's, you're living it. And I want everyone, everyone who crosses our path to come in here to feel at home. I want them, when I say to them, welcome home, and their face lights up, it means a lot. It really means a lot. Well, customer experience is all what we're about here. You know, I have a building and it's pretty and it's great and it has all the amenities that I could sell. But at the end of the day, it's still people helping people. It's just part of my life. That's, that's how I see it, you know? And I'm not just a concierge here, I'm a concierge all the time. It's just treating others how you want to be treated yourself. The golden rule is so simple, um, but I think it's applicable in all business. If you can't have fun in what you do, then you probably shouldn't be in this industry in the first place. And I love what I do. I love my job. Double tall, half decaf, non fat, one raw sugar, green tea frappuccino. Put coffee beans into the frappuccino. Java shape frappuccino with a splash of peppermint. Vanilla latte with no foam. Pour a little bit of frappuccino, then more caramel sauce, and then more frappuccino and more caramel sauce. Carrying a smile all the way through when you have like 35 drinks on your bar and you're the only barista. How awesome is that, right? <laughs> It's just like, it keeps going. I want a raspberry hot chocolate today with two pumps of mocha, one pump of raspberry, two and a half pumps of vanilla. Not Us humans have a natural need to feel engaged and connected. And that's really where the brand started from. Uh, when Howard was over in Italy, and the neighborhood baristas, you know, on every corner there's a little coffee shop where people just pop in very casually. And every day it's a ritual. And it's really maybe not necessarily just about the coffee. It's really more about the sense of community and a sense of belonging and the sense of engagement. We've done insights with our customers and they've told us when they see a positive culture behind the counter, they want to stay longer and enjoy it because they see this reflection of a positive environment in the store. And that really starts with the baristas behind the counter. Okay, I'll tell you a specific story. It was in uh, North Carolina. We were moving a store from one side of the street to the next, to the other side of the street. And there was a customer waiting to talk to me when I showed up there to visit the store. And he explained to me that uh, he was quite upset about us moving the store because he had met his wife at that Starbucks store and they had come there every morning for a cup of coffee every single day for 15 years. And she had recently passed away from cancer two months ago. And his story to me was, when you move this store, you're taking a piece of my family and my life away. And he asked. It was, it was an emotional moment. Um, he said, when you guys move the store, could I have the table and the chair? And we went, well, absolutely. Would you like both chairs? So these places of belonging and a sense of community is, is really important to people. If a woman walks down the street and she drops her scarf, for example, the person who is going to run after the woman picks up the scarf and gives it to the woman, that's the person we, we want to hire. Somebody who would do that not for 
not for, you know, any like financial advantage or personal gain, nothing. Just because in their heart, they feel like this is the right thing to do. Our patron saint is Miles Davis, and one of the things he's most famous for is his improvisation. Uh, and some of his most remarkable recordings were done in one take because they couldn't be recreated. And we kind of look at each table as one perfect take. Each interaction, each exchange, each transaction is unique. It can't be typified, it can't be recreated, and it's gotta be personal and in the moment. The people that come through here are so varied, but if you can find one thing that links you to that person, it suddenly becomes a personal experience. You know, just picking up on a, on a life event's birthday, how many years, or it's an anniversary, and you know, where did you get married, and why are you celebrating? With, you know, just asking these questions that connect with, with somebody personally, it's incredibly powerful, and it's, it's astounding how many people you can actually find a link to, sometimes very small and sometimes quite enormous. We, we hire amazing people and then let them kind of be themselves, right? Because the more they are themselves, the more the guest feels comfortable. What we talk about the, the greatest success of waiting on a table is when they're moved to tears of joy. Not that that will happen at every table, but always should be happy. We ask a lot of their pocket, we ask a lot of their time. And for that, they should be satiated, enjoying what they're eating and those kind of things, but further, to feel loved and cared for, to feel the warm hug of hospitality in so many ways, and to have that be the lasting impression. I love what I do. And that is the biggest gift I have. And I, I feel like the luckiest person in the world because of that. I get up in the morning and I want to come to work every single day. And that is, you know, that's gold. Our amazing brand, you know, the inventor of the car brings with it so many advantages, but it brings with it also such high expectations. I think great organizations are humble enough to know that uh, they don't have all the answers. And wherever we can learn from someone else, and whether that's a whether that's a five-star chef, or whether that's an amazing hotel, or whether that's a great cup of coffee delivered in a, in a highly stylized and customized way, we're happy to go to school on any one of those brands. I believe 100% that we're on the way, that we're focusing our energy and our culture and our people and our resources around this issue. It's not a question of, if we get there, it's a question of when, how long it takes us, and how high that customer experience bar will be when we set it. Imagine harnessing the power of 24,000 minds and hearts towards delivering that, that amazing experience. If we can engage them at that level, I really do believe we can kind of rewrite what we're doing here.